listening to the Getting Salty Experience podcast. Away we go. We are still alive. Welcome back. Yes. We're still alive. Welcome yes. back to the Getting Salty Experience podcast. It's the only one that brings the firehouse kitchen table from you, no matter where you are, Ruff. You could be yeah. in the Philippines. I don't know. You could be uh, somewhere <laughs> out in Montreal. I don't know. You could, you could be walking on the side of the Meadowlands. You could be walking on the side of Meadowlands because you don't know that you actually have to pay for parking before you go there. I don't know. You could be anywhere. But this is where we are now. We're back. We see Frankie Suffin, Mrs. Procaccini's husband's in there. Uh, oh, we got yeah. uh, Johnny Albanese. All the regulars are in there. Uh, Fat Daddy Ray. Oh, Welcome back to the show. We almost missed you guys. Almost. I got my new Not plaque. You see my new plaque on my shoulder? Uh, yeah, look at that. Frankie Back-to-rack. Suffin did a great job, man. Frankie gave that to Ruffy uh, on the boat trip. Very Good nice. Boat done. trip was great. I don't even think we talked to these guys since the boat trip, right? I don't know. It's I can't even believe we're on time, considering we've been slacking the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Oof. Maybe you've been slacking, but I've been writing. I've bro. been slacking. I, I'm writing the uh, the next documentary on the rescues, and also a documentary on uh, the Halligan, where it came, where it was actually made. Maybe even the house that it was made in. We'll see. I'm going to all that stuff. This could be a good one. Welcome back. Uh, at any yeah. minute, Gonzo could run out of here like his hair's on fire because he's getting deployed from the <laughs> to the USAR team. Hey, USAR. Because I hope Florida's cool. Cool. I'm waiting. Well, <laughs> no, nothing yet. I'm wait, waiting. let me see. No, I no, no, wait. Yeah. I thought no, I was no, important. No. They don't I need me. I hope. I can't. I'm so excited. I hope this phone jiggles. <laughs> yeah, I'm going on the USAR hurricane shenanigans. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna run around in a in a boat and uh, pick people out of the water. And uh, Ruffy said that he wouldn't do that five hundred thousand dollars. He said before no, no. we started. <laughs> two, yeah. So at first I started with two fifty. Then, <laughs> then I'm like, you know what? That's that's too little. Really? I for for five hundred, you'd do it? How, how long? Do I got to. Go? Coops, I already did that. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I'm just. I don't know. You've but, been there. You did that. You know, if I got to look at Gans for like fourteen days, like straight, straight, <laughs> I breathe on even with this fucking hair and everything. It's looking not going nice to look like that. That's what I'm saying. It's not going to be good <laughs> yeah. after the first day. No bueno. Nah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got a great guest. I was telling the guest in, in the pre-show that you know I love Vinny Dunn. Great guy, dude. Rob O'Neill. He fucking killed that fucking murdering bastard, right? But this guy, I don't good think one. I've been more excited for a guest than fucking. Five minute, bro. When you're a Jet fan, when you're a hurting inside, you know, inside. 45 fucking years. I was going to say, not for a year. 45 years I'm a Jet fan. And I real, got the real problem with Ed, though, is he don't tell it like it is, though, at all. Like, oh, so no, nothing like it. I got Ed. We're going to have to get it out of him. <laughs> is that part of your rant? What? No. Oh, <laughs> no. there's another rant? Yeah, you want to, you want to start uh, it? Shit. All right, Gonzo, let's do the rant. Here we go. And away we go. <laughs> Unshy and unfiltered, ladies and gentlemen, this is Coobs' Ring. I'm going to make this brief. All right, so I went to the Philippines, as most of you know, and this is all I want to say. People in this country who hate this country, I got no time. Ain't no got no time for that, bro. You know what I'm saying, Guns? Here's the thing. We think people in this country are poor. You don't know what the fuck poor is, bro. Go to a third. I implore you, go to a third world country. And you will see what poor is. Poor in this country is living in subsidized housing, having five TVs, $100 sneakers, a VCR, and a car. Being poor in a third world country, you may have running water. You may not. You live on a dirt floor. Your house is made out of cardboard and corrugated steel. That's fucking poor. So all of you, uh, I don't want to say all of them, but the uh, millennials and all those fuckers Mm -hmm. who hate this country, this is the best country on the face of the earth that ever existed, bro. So appreciate where you are and appreciate the liberties and, and the freedoms that you have in this country. And like I said, go to a third world country and you let me know how you like it. You'll be coming back crying in tears in about five fucking minutes. Mm-hmm. Why did you go there Bam. in the first place? Well, my wife's family's from there. So. <laughs> <laughs> great place. It was a great. great how, was your, how was your trip? Great place. Great. It is great. <laughs> oh. Had a really good time. My father in law is a hell of a guy. I love him. Great yeah. guy. And that's all I gotta say. What? Did he come across? Ah, he always comes across when I'm all right. I have to fight him for the bill. I gotta I gotta rubble in the jungle for the bill, bro. Oh, you know what I mean? So that's all I'm saying. All right, let's get this guy in here. All right, let's uh we gotta play a couple of things for us, guns. All right, here we go. Let's do let's hear from one source. 
Equip your fire and rescue emergency response personnel with the equipment they need to save lives and keep themselves as protected as possible while in harm's way with safety equipment from One Source Fire Rescue. Our comprehensive supply company provides the life-saving implements emergency responders need to be prepared for any situation. With dependable quality products by reputable companies such as Traeger, Viking Life Saving Equipment, Fire Hooks, Crew Boss, Kuriyama Fire Hose and Nozzles, Phoenix Technology, Helmets, Vanguard Gloves, Tempest Fans, Ready Rack, Black Diamond Boots, and much more. Our quality products are competitively priced to meet your budget criteria. One Source was established in 2012 and continues to strive to provide not only the best products on the market, but customer service. One Source has been and continues to be committed to meeting all new and demanding challenges in the firefighting industry with the highest quality and the most dependable products. We will be at, I will be anyway, Ruffy won't be here. I will be in Wildwood, New Jersey with the One Source guys on the corner. Uh, We are outside on the corner and they always get me shit-faced at least two or three days down there. Yeah, we'll be in Wildwood. Come see us down at Wildwood with One Source. They're good guys. Uh, we'll be down there. Go ahead, guns. Play the rest of us. We get that in here. Copy that. Here we go. Armor Tough interlocking floor tiles are the best choice to replace new or aging, stained or cracked concrete or epoxy floors. Here's why. Armor Tough tiles come with a lifetime warranty and are usually installed in one or two days, depending on the size of your station, with virtually no disruption in daily operation. Armor Tough interlocking tiles are guaranteed from chipping, cracking, peeling, breaking, or staining. Once installed, the tiles are non skid and non slip and meet the ADA standards for the friction coefficient. The tiles are stain resistant and impervious to any chemicals or volatiles that are used in the fire service. Once installed, your floor will be easy to clean with just soap and water. Install an Armor Tough tile floor in your apparatus bays, offices, training rooms, workshops, exercise rooms, kitchens, banquet halls, or any other room in your station. Call Vince today for a no-obligation quote at 908-917-7697. Why install a breakable epoxy floor that will need replacing in 5 to 10 years when you could have a floor that will last a lifetime? Drop a halligan on an Armor Tough floor and you won't see any damage. Don't try this with concrete or epoxy. Join the hundreds of career and volunteer fire departments nationwide who have chosen an Armor Tough interlocking tile floor. Armor Tough interlocking tiles are half the price of epoxy and will last a lifetime without issue. Again, call Vince today for a no obligation quote at 908 917 Seven six nine seven. Nice. I think I'm gonna hit up Vince for a, a dinner, right? Don't we have two on him? We took him out to dinner. Oh place? yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna hit him up hard. And while I'm out at the dinner with him, I'm gonna ask him exactly what the friction coefficient. Is. I was thinking the same thing. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> you know what I mean. I am no, I am no stranger to the friction coefficient. <laughs> if we're talking about the same, bro. When she said that, I, I said Eddie's in the back going. What the hell the are these fuck guys am I doing here? here? Friction coefficient. <laughs> I don't you know can what that do is. it. You can do it, man. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's get his answer. You dick. dick. Okay. <laughs> All right. You, we want to run our end, or we get 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 going. Uh, we let's don't get even it. need our end. No, no, right. right. no, okay. Let's bring in the guy. Let's bring him in. All right. Come to the stage. We got Pime and Ed. Eddie Angelo. Woo! Do it. Go. Do it. Do it! How you doing, guys? How you oh doing? My. Oh Ed, my did you hear the uh, friction coefficient on that one? Did you get that? <laughs> I heard it. You know, <laughs> do you know what it is? I mean, can you explain oh, the friction? <laughs> I think the Jets are going to have the friction coefficient. Oh, we're going to have something this year. Well, let's get into the Jets later. Let's get patriotic first before we jump into Ed's career. Let's get into uh... – go ahead, Gonzo. Do it. Here we go. I pledge allegiance – to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excellent. Nice. Great. Excellent. Great job. That's all we got, right? We can dive right into Ed's career now, right? We're good. Absolutely. Ooh, Ed, it. welcome to the show. First of all, like I was saying, bro, we've had a Thanks lot of for good having guests me, on. Guys. 
Thanks, with Fireman Ed. It's, a, it's an honor. It's an honor. I know there's a lot of New York City firemen and firemen all over that are listening to this, and I'm a I'm proud to just be a part of uh, being a New York City fireman. It was the greatest privilege in the world. Can't give him one. Coops was like this when I said I got fireman Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's, uh, it's... <laughs> he's like this. Boing. You don't have it. You don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, man. Why, man, Ed? What? <laughs> I had to go to that page. Sorry. I got nine yeah. pages of stuff. Oh, yeah, to maybe you got too many now, Mr. Sound Effects. Why, 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 why waste any time? We might as well break balls right from the first. Right, oh, right off the bat. Yeah. Right I off. love it. I love it. All right, Ed, let's go back to. Uh... You're all, let's go. Actually, let's go back before the fire department. Where'd you grow up? Tell us a little about the early life. What you did before you were a fireman? Yeah, I was. Uh, I grew up in College Point, Queens, uh, oh, home shit. of champions. Little Queens, in. Um, you know what? I had a great childhood, man. Uh, hung out in the schoolyard, PS twenty seven, the complex. All of all my guys, we played ball all day, drank at night. And just had a ball. Um, man, College Point was one of a kind. Like, I realize it now as the, you know, as the years go on, you don't really realize where you grew up until you actually go out there and start to, you know, see other people. And, man, I grew up in a tough-ass neighborhood. And, you know, it became easier. When I came out of there, I was like, whoa, this is pretty good. There was a lot of firemen that came out of there. That lived yeah, a there lot, too. a lot of firemen. Man. College Point. A lot, a lot of firemen in College Point and uh, Whitestone. I mean, Greg Bacconi was from one thirty-two. Never heard the of that. Stone. Greg Bacconi? No, I never heard to, of that guy. No. I used to go out. I used to go. I used to go to one thirty-two and two eighty. I used to go there and hang out. Uh, oh shit! Before I got on the job, yeah, yeah, Greg. Uh, Greg was a big part of why I became a New York City fireman. I mean, uh, we had him on the show. You know, we Greg had him was on the great. show. Greg, I didn't know oh, that. You did? Greg yeah. was a great, great fireman. Great fireman, man. Do you Tough know Paul guy. Mannix or any of those guys? Paulie and uh, Chief Mannix was from uh, White yeah, Stone. Paul, Paulie. I know Paulie yeah. well. I, I was actually with Paulie uh, a couple weeks ago at uh, Jackie Mattis's 60th birthday in uh, Bourbon Street in Bayside. Oh. We had a ball. It was all the White Stone boys, a bunch of crazy-ass motherfuckers. That is show. a tight-knit community there, man. They're very yeah. close you and tight-knit. College Point, White Stone, really uh, – uh, really proud where I grew up. I tell you, I, I had a lot of uh, a lot of fun and um, a lot of memories and um, just a great time. You know, Jimmy Cody. I was just, just with Jimmy Cody. He was from Twenty Eight Trucks, Sixty Nine Inch, and I, I played golf with him with Mikey Laporta today. And uh, yeah, great guys, man. The best. The best. Did you- okay. Yeah, cool. But so, what made you want to be a fireman? Did you have any family on, or? Yeah, I had. I had family. I had a uh, my, my uncle Tommy Anderson was a fireman. My uh, my uh, uncle. Uh, Frankie Tonkin, uh, because my mom's was the Tonkin family. She's a nice Irish lady, Molly Whoa. Tonkin. Oh, she's, she's Molly. Nice Irish lady. For what are you talking about, Molly? I have the Italian in me, you know, Anne's alone. And then uh, Tonkin was the Irish side. So uh, my uncle was on a job and Tommy Annis was on a job. So, you know, what really attracted me, I mean, obviously the fire trucks, when you look at the fire trucks, right? But when I used to see them on a Tuesday, lifting in the basement <laughs> all right and hanging out or playing softball or whatever oh, yeah, the fuck yeah, they yeah. were doing i was like what oh, the yeah, fuck? Yeah, yeah. i said every back then everybody's working monday to friday nine to five yeah these guys and are i was going, and, yeah, I, going. I, I don't want to fucking do that but what the biggest thing was they were all in great shape and yeah. i'm looking i'm going yeah my uncle's in his 40s and i'm like this guy's a beast and i go it just in my head i went man, I, I, I could do this. You know, I could do this. I, I would like to do it. So that's what happened. That's, that's, Where did they that's work, Eddie? Um, my, my, my uncle Tommy worked in um, Brooklyn in uh, uh, 109 truck in yeah. Bay Ridge. Mm-hmm. Um, he worked in, he worked down in uh, Manhattan, lower Manhattan. Uh, my my uh, uncle Frankie worked in... Um, uh, 116 in Queens, and then he was he was up in Harlem for a while. He was up in Harlem. There was a Kevin Tonkin in 116. Yeah, too. Kevin. Kevin was in one. Well, Kevin was in eight. That's my cuz. 
He was oh, Kevin Tonkin's your cousin? I work with him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. my cousin was in 80 and 23, and then he went to uh, 116. And, it was a skull. And Came it was a skull, skull yeah. when I was there. The skulls. The skulls. <laughs> the flaming skulls. The yeah. flaming skulls. I forgot. Yeah, right. good head of hair on that Kevin Tonkin, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was a good-looking man. The oh, ladies, bro. He the was ladies smooth, kind of bro. liked him. He was smooth, Kevin Tonkin, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah, well, they, they, like, they, they like some of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got. I like a little bit of us. Yeah, us. <laughs> so you take. Yeah, well, what, were you doing anything before that? Did you have a job out of high school? Yeah, I was. A, I was a Steamford. I was a. I was a. Uh, I was in the Steamfitters Union. So I got oh, in because right. my uncles were Steamfitters. So I got in the Steamfitters Union and uh, went through oh. the apprenticeship. Ruffy, the Anza Loans. The Anza Loans. Hey, you know, you know need, what I mean? You need a guy in the union? You know I got a guy for you. I went through the apprenticeship, and then, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, I, I graduated in June of 87, and then I got called for the New York City Fire Department in September of 1987. It wasn't wow. even a thought. It wasn't even and a thought. And I wound up uh, doing, doing both jobs. So it was good. It was all good. All great. All right. So you go to probate school. Blessed. Anybody uh, – um, that we would know in your probie class? Yeah, Paulie Soman was my boy. Oh, all right. Paulie Soman. I just, I just texted well, Paulie, him the other day. Paulie to wound up on. going to – Paulie went to 45. 58 and 40 – oh, no, he went to uh, 45 and 58. 45. At, right. a, at, a, at a probie school. Then he then he went over to uh, squad, uh, 41, which mm-hmm. I seen him when I was up in Harlem. We were rolling then. And uh, then Paulie became a – well, Paulie went to rescue too, but then became a uh, – uh, Lieutenant uh, came over to 28 truck. Right, he was up by you, right? Right. Yeah, right, he right. was over in 28. I, Paulie's the best. Wow, that's awesome. Great, great fireman, tough guy. Love him. You know all those. But listen, those boys from listen Brooklyn. Brooklyn's got great firemen, man. I mean, you know, all the boroughs got great firemen. But you know what? Rescue two. You know, with Jimmy yeah, Ellison. Guys, that's the cream. That's the Danny cream. Murphy and freaking oh Tommy God. Daly and Paulie Niagara. I mean, there's so many guys you could go on and on and on. You know, Bobby, uh, what was Bobby's Galleon. name? Galleon. Galleon. I love Bobby. Yeah. They're great guys. They're, you know, they're still, you go on uh, Woody. Woody. Yeah, yeah. Woody's oh, an animal. You know, Woody's a fucking <laughs> Is Woody still on a job? It. Yes. He is. He's, he's, he's still CBS. on. Yeah. Yeah. He's, still he's on. fucking rough. Listen, he's out of his mind. Listen, great companies. Brooklyn. You know, I was in Brooklyn for four years, but I was in, you know, more over in Williamsburg. You know, we, 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 we did some work over there. Definitely did some work with 221 and 104, especially when you think about now. We right. definitely did work. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, But, you know, we got shut up by 216 and 108, you know. Um, that's just it was the, just, they were tucked in that it, corner over logis- there. Logistics, yeah, man. That's yeah. that's part of uh, the fire department. So when, you walk, when you walk into 221 104, they got a shit ton of unit citations in there, bro. When you yeah. walk in there. You know what? They're, 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 they're a good company. They're, yeah. they're a great company. I, I Listen, I was blessed to go there. Um, I enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, you know, John Rizzo was a legend there. I mean... He was a beast, you know. Uh, so many guys, Richie McDade and Paulie Farrell was there, uh, who became a deputy chief. Deputy, Paulie yeah. was, he was, Paulie a, was a ball player with me with yeah. Billy Tafano and Danny a tough, Costello. tough voice had, like this. Farrell, he had a good right? stash. Farrell had Tony Tarabokia. We we won a city championship. Oh, Tarabokia, was, Tarabokia there. was there. Yeah, Tony was. Tony came in the probie class after me. Wow. In '88, I came in September of '87. He came in February of '88. Right. So me and Tony were back three four in the fucking lineup. And but he he went up to Harlem too, didn't he? Yeah, he went up to twenty six truck 26, up in the uh, fire right. factory. Right. So uh, you know, Tony was there. Danny Porciello, Billy Tafano, uh, Terry Fredo, uh, Bert Gallo. I mean, you just you go on and on. Jack Aserno, Richie McDade. I mean, there was so many guys from Brooklyn. Uh, Jimmy Burt, uh, Jimmy Butler, Walter Rogers, Timmy Smith. Mikey Moran, Jerry Schnell, I mean, Rick Ackford. <laughs> I'm in Ed. Hey, 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 Ed, I always say all the time that the one story I always used to hear about uh, 221 and 104, there was a guy in the firehouse who bought up a couple of the vacants like across the street yeah, or something Vito. like <laughs> he like, I mean, He was like, yeah, he wanted to get everybody in like to, to buy a bunch of vacants across the street. I don't know if what the whole story was, but, you know, supposedly he bought them and, you yeah. know, He's laughing all the way to the goddamn bank, right? Because each one of those oh. is probably like ten million dollars now, right? Yeah, no, Vito. no exaggeration, right? No, exaggeration. you know what? Uh, that's the truth, Vito. Now that was before I got there, and Vito bought a shitload of them. 
And um, he was a, you talk about a character. I forget his last name. Vito uh, was a fucking dope. I bet you had a vowel at the end of it. Yeah, he was a crazy <laughs> ass motherfucker. And uh, he was a great guy. Great guy. And uh, but he was smart, you know, and he uh yeah, man, he, he, lived, he, he, li- he lived it up, brother. He lived it up. Yeah, man. Yeah. I tell you this story, I told the story many times, but I came out of Proby School with the to Fort Green and right literally right next to the firehouse in 210 was a brownstone, and we took their backyard because it was vacant the entire time was there. I said to the guys one time, hey, why don't we all pitch in and buy this? They're like, shut the fuck up, man. Get back in the sink and shut the fuck up. You know? <laughs> Can you and imagine? Now, now that one's that worth brown- like $10 million. Yeah! <laughs> you know what? Right. Let me tell you something. 221-104, they were tucked in there, but you know, it was a crazy ass uh, uh, neighborhood. You know, in 87, when I got up there, man, the that South was side, just yeah, drugs. Yeah. That was drugs. There was all vacant buildings. We go to fires, man. Let me tell you something. The craziest time if you remember this, was when they they would fucking they'd have they would mix the crack with the heroin, and you'd go in there. It was speedballing. They called it speedballing. So we'd fucking respond and see these motherfuckers, and all of a sudden they'd be like this on they'd be like this, and then all of a sudden they go, "You motherfucker!" <laughs> like a maniac. Like go, what the fuck? It's kind of like, like now. It was unbelievable. And oh, yeah. I mean, that was the prevalent. prevalent. Well, South Second Street was a drug den. Only yeah. like four four uh, brownstones up from the firehouse. And what they used to do, literally, they used to all hang out in the, you know, down the corners on each side, South Second, South Third, or Bedford, whatever. And fucking Bedford all of a sudden, he'd, he'd, he'd go like this. He, you know, one of the guys would go like this. All right, and they'd fucking rush to the to the fucking staircase, and you go, look at this! This is a fucking free for all. I mean, it was up, it was crazy. Ed, when I when I say this all the time, my my grandmother, my my whole family grew up in Williamsburg, uh, Withy Street and uh, Graham Avenue, right? So yeah. right across from uh, one forty six, across the highway on one forty six, North Eighth Street, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I used to take when I used to go to the Ranger games, and when I used to go, to, I went to Kevin and I went to Brew College. A lot of times I would, it, it cut off a lot. I grew up in Middle Village, so it would cut off a lot. So I would just take a 10 minute ride with my car, park the car over by the L train by park Bedford. Yeah, park the car by Bedford. And I, and I laugh because in 1986, we graduated at high school. So 87, 88, if you went on Bedford Avenue back then, dude, it was like, like you just said, just uh, like this. You were. You yes. were checking all the time. Yes. Fast forward. Yes. Now. Yeah, right now. <laughs> they're sipping cappuccino, oh. right? It's oh. like it's comical. It's like, these people have it's no the idea. Truth. They're paying $4,000 yeah. for a closet, and uh, they have no idea what was going on just 20, 25 years ago, yeah. 30 years ago. You know, you know, it's funny because 221-104 at that time was like the middle of the road, you know, like maybe uh, bottom 40%, maybe, you know, maybe halfway mm-hmm. as far mm-hmm. as work. But – we fucking worked. You know, back then the fire load was a lot more. Right. So and it's but, packed you know, over there. There's a lot of people over there. Yeah, but as firemen, you know, you always want to do more, you want to do more, you want to do more. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And that. you know, the logistics always hurt 221104. And the guys in the firehouse were beasts. They were the best. They were polished, they rolled, but you know what? They get shut out. You know, and it used to, and it make me fucking nuts. I mean, I love playing ball, but I wanted to go to as many fires as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I loved all the guys there. I loved the guys. They were the best. They were so good, those guys. In in uh yeah in two twenty one oh four. But you know, I, I I need to move on because I wanted to go to more yeah. fires. Yeah. How, how long were you there before you caught your first job, Ed? Um. I don't even know, man. I, I don't know. Maybe six months, four or five months, something like yeah. that. Do you remember yeah. your first job or you don't? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I don't, I'm not sure. You know, uh, probably. I, I think it was down the block from the firehouse. I was fucking, uh, I got lucky. It was, it was rolling, rolling down the fucking hallway. And I think I remember, uh, I remember one of the, uh, who was it? I think it was Mikey McPartland was the lieutenant. I oh, went down, I took care of business. I was lucky. I, you know, you, listen, you do you do the best you can, right? You, you know, yep. 
fucking let's go. I mean, I, I, I'm not here to talk war stories because you know what? I let, I let the men, I let the men decide what I was. That's the bottom line. I know, I, I think I did my job. I did it the best I could. But I know one thing. The guys that I work with, they were badass motherfuckers. Hey, that's the reoccurring theme on this show, brother. That's just Everybody the says the same fucking thing, man. We, it's we, just we, the we, truth, man. We're just you know, living, can, living the if dream, you can't man. Be, if you can't be humble on this job, you know, and you know that the men are going to make you humble, bro. If you ain't humble, they go, they're going to make you humble. Like that. <laughs> The way it is so and you know hey listen every fire was a different fire right I, one thing i always used to say you know as you got a little time on a job i used to say when you know you really had a great fucking you, know, you did your job you did you did what you were supposed to do it was a fucking great outcome everything worked out yeah yeah and i used to say man i just want to put it in a bottle and i want to put it over here <laughs> and i want to pull it out take that pull it out yeah. out because <laughs> lord knows there was jobs where i went what the, the hell fuck did that go on there? Yeah, yeah, what yeah, the yeah. fuck did yeah. I do? You know, it wasn't for a lack of trying. It wasn't right. for a lack no, of trying. No, no, no. Listen, but that was the best part. You know, even back then, I mean, you, you got on the late 80s. You know, you could make a mistake and then have a job fairly quickly. I'm sure even, you know, when you get up to 69, yeah. fairly quick so that you could redeem yourself. You know, the yeah. guys today, maybe they don't have that so much where, you know, you make no. a mistake, you might be sitting on that egg for a little while. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, it's they, they got to do a little bit more drilling and all that stuff to, to, to keep you, it going. You, know? you always feel for the guys because you know what? You know, Listen, when you go to fires and you go consistently, man, there's nothing like it. There ain't no bitching. There ain't no complaining. Yeah, no doubt. And, and you know what? Everybody, everybody yeah. is what they are, you know, and you, you're, Listen, if you're a dog, you're exposed. And quickly. You, and you, you but you make your way out of there. Yeah, you yeah. You yeah. just make your way out of there. Yeah. And that that a fire has a certain way of making everything okay it's, again. It's the truth. I mean? and, the, and the boys <laughs> just take care of business and um no you know, doubt about we, it. We live we live for another day and everybody got out of there in one piece and it's all good, bro. Yep. And we're just waiting for the next rush. We're waiting for the next rush. <laughs> So I wanted to say, so when we were in the pre-show, you were talking, Ed, how, you know, before we even wanted to get into it, but you started talking about how you decided you wanted to move on and you started looking at, at uh, Harlem. So just kind of re redo that story you were talking about, how uh, Fireman Ed maybe right. helped you out a little bit there. Yeah, but yeah. Before, well, before that, Ed, like, why did you choose those companies, that, like 69 and 28? What was it well, about that? What happened was um, when I first, when I was in 221 and 104, you know, you, 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 that becomes a home, man. That's like, you know, you love those guys, you know, so you're going to be, you're going to be upset when you got to leave because you have your boys. Mm. You know what I mean? We won a city championship in softball. We were real good in sports. Wow. We great. We were great in basketball. We won a city championship in 1990. We won the whole thing. And uh, Billy Tofano, God rest his soul. Billy was the greatest fucking softball player of all time. I mean, he was money. He, you know what? You know what his line was, brother. He, he said, "I got to tell this line." Billy says, "I said, Billy, you could hit fucking ropes." He goes, he "Goes Eddie, Anzi." He goes, "I will wake up in the middle of the night at three in the morning, and I'll fucking hit a rope." <laughs> you lie, brother. That's what I'll do. And, and you know what? He could. He could. <laughs> there were so many great ball players there, and they all wanted to go to fires. And we did go to fires, but we just didn't go there enough. You know, I mean, not for me. I was fucking losing it. And uh, But, you know, there's a fine line there, you know, because you love your boys. And I had so much fun with all those dudes from there, and we just had – you know, we bonded. We it's were a tough. Like, it's Paul, tough, bro. Everybody yeah, says the did, same. We did a lot of things, man. My boy, Paul, Paulie Ferro. I fucking love Paulie Ferro. That was my guy. Danny Porciello and Tony Taraboki and Gallo and Fredo. Those motherfuckers, we all the Italian fucking mom, baby. Let's go. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, tough. it was tough to leave there. It really was. Um, you know, there were so many great guys. Anyway. You know, you, you do that, and so what happened was I was, you know, I was I wound up being fireman at, but not not at first. You got to remember something. I got on a job in '87, all right, but I was doing the jet can in '86 with my brother Frankie, okay. So, what happened was we go up to Buffalo, 
in 88. Now I'm doing a jet chant and my brother's got me on his shoulders, but I'm not wearing, I wasn't, a, I wasn't wearing a fire helmet. So now just bear with me. So we go up to Buffalo and this guy, Johnny Cirillo, you know, Johnny, I think Johnny's still on the job. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's, he was the captain of Rescue One. I think he might yeah, he's still in Rescue, Rescue One. One. He is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Johnny. Johnny's my boy. So Johnny Johnny has this fucking helmet here. This helmet right here. This one. It's the fucking helmet. Now, this was painted by Frankie Campisi. Oh, my God. 107. 107. 107. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah. Frankie's the best. The Talk best. about a monster, That's bro. That guy's a monster. Just, I just seen him <clears throat> at... Uh, Neil Farrow's wake and God rest Neil's soul and fucking Frankie's still a beast. Frankie's yeah. like 66 years old. He looks fucking like a monster. Yeah, we anyway, gotta, he, we gotta painted work that. This. he painted this and so I go up to Buffalo and Johnny's wearing this fucking thing from two and a quarter and 107. So he says <clears> to me, Eddie, he's got the helmet. I says, Johnny, can I wear that fucking helmet next week? Sure, Eddie. He says, you know, you don't care to a quarter one. I don't give a fuck. I'm a fireman. I'm going to wear the helmet until I get my own. So I put the helmet on. The, uh, anyway, the fuck goes crazy. Anyway, the point is how I got up to Harlem was Richie Shearer is sitting in uh, in front of me. Now, understand this. Me season Richie, ticket holder. Yeah, he's a season ticket all the season. We're sitting in row three and one section 133 in the old stadium. Richie's in section in row two. We never talked about fire service. We just drank and fucking partied and jets. talked about the jets. Right. So we're hitting it. We're having a ball. That was when you could bring all the coolers in. It's before 9-11. We bring I bring a fucking Vodka. We bring in containers of vodka, <laughs> all right? Me and my brother would have, and we'd have it planned. Me and Frankie would know exactly how long it would last. If we went to overtime, we were in trouble. <laughs> and we couldn't and we couldn't give it out. Like, if we gave out more than four or five, so he would motherfuck me or I'd motherfuck him. <laughs> now you got a half a load on, and you're giving them out, right? And you go, we're not going to have anything left. <laughs> anyway, right. Richie, we're fucking having a good time. All of a sudden, one of the chiefs comes down to the section and he says, hey, Eddie, Chief Salas out. He goes, listen, I heard you got a paper in f for the Hilton up in Harlem. He goes, I says, yeah, Chief. He goes, you want to get up there? I says, yeah. Richie Shearer turns around and goes to me, hey, Bob, you want to go to Harlem? <laughs> hey, Bob. The Hilton? You want to go to the Harlem Hilton? I said, yeah. I says, what are you talking about? I says, you know the, you know the fucking Hilton? I says, you, what do you mean, Bob? Are you you're in the fire service? He goes to me, I'm a dispatcher. I said, what borough? He goes, I'm the supervising dispatcher. I'm the guy. I'm for the, the guy. city of New York. I go, Richie! <laughs> <laughs> My man! We'll never done this before. He goes, you want to go to 28 truck? I says, no, no. I want to go to 69 inch. I want to put the fire out. He goes, you're going to want to go to 28. I says, I want to go to 69. The number one on the job. I want to go. OSWs. I want to go to fucking 69. He goes, all right. All right. At that time, there was a big delay with the with the uh, uh, transfer orders. You know, they used to come out like every three months. Yeah, every quarter. Come right. out for like fucking 15 months. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was about, I'm about eight months in. This was January. I'm All of a sudden, it's August, and there's no transfer orders. It's fucking eight months. I'm sitting on the apron of 202-101 in Battery Tunnel. I was... You know, Red Hook, yeah. On, yeah. Uh, you know, I went there, uh, you know, fill in whatever. Uh, so uh, I go in, and uh, I'm on the apron, and all of a sudden, the 3-2 battalion rolls up, and he goes... You ain't alone. <laughs> yeah. He goes, you got a paper in for 69 engine? I said, yeah. He goes, you're on that order. I said, what order? <laughs> he goes, there was a transfer order. I said, what order? <laughs> he goes, no, there's a 14-man order. I said, what? He goes, all of a sudden, next thing I know, he goes, Anne's alone, department phone. I fucking answer the phone. I says, 202. I says, 221. At 202. I didn't know what the fuck to say. I go, look, I was fucking. It's Richie. 
He goes, good things come to those who wait. <laughs> you should have put him for 28. 28. <laughs> I said, listen, I'm happy. I want to go to fuck it. I want to put oh, the that's fire great. That's the That's the heart and soul of the job. Let's go. I, I, I hope, just, I, I hope go. the next game you brought him his own pint of vodka, bro. Oh, no. He got, he got, a, he got a nice fucking uh, a tailor-made jersey, I think. Oh, right. You know how to, to do it, like Ed. I went and got him a fucking jersey. I'm trying to think who I got him. Uh, I'm trying to think back then. That was what year is it? 92, 92. 92. I think I got him. Uh, who the fuck did I get him? Todd. I I, oh, Richard no, Todd was no, in the 80s. No, no, oh. no, 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 no. I got him. Uh, oh, I can't fucking remember. Who I Ch- got Chief Daly said, is in the chat. He says, tell Eddie 92 was number one. <laughs> 92 and four. Well, they thought they were number one. <laughs> Anyway, uh, good um, stuff. The, Jimmy Daly's the best. That's my, that's my cuz. That's my that's cuz. My cuz. That's yeah. my guy. He was on the uh, fireboat. Okay. We have a we have a trip that we do with all past guests. We go out on a fireboat. We go around the Statue of Liberty every August, and he was just Jimmy, on it. Jimmy Daly is the best. Mm. You know, his grandmother was my godmother. Me, oh, oh, me. Right? Nice. My mother, my mother, and his grandmother were best of friends. I know Jimmy since we're like fucking four or five years old. That's awesome. I mean, Louis knows him. And he's a hot dog. Jimmy's a Jimmy's a class guy, yeah. top shelf. Louis knows Louis, Louis knows him really what well. What can I say? The best. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice. Yeah, listen. Before we go any further, you know what we forgot to do. <laughs> we we forgot to do the word of the day, bro. We that's because Coops had a boing. He was I was, too, to I was infatuated with the uh, five minute. So <laughs> let's do the word of the day before we go any further. Here we go. My trick's done. Fireman Ed. Fireman Ed, N-Y-J-F beer. Fireman Ed came up with his own beer here. Uh, put yes. it a little closer, Ed. Let me see. Well, I, I didn't yeah. actually come up with it, but. Uh, let, me, let me back that out. Get Ed, why let the truth get in the way of a good story? Come on, Ed. It's your <laughs> beer. Bolero <laughs> Snort from. There you go. Kallstatt. Bolero yeah. Snort from Kallstatt. Um, decided they want to do a fireman at beer. I'm on it. Um, you know, it goes through a good cause. There's a there's a QR code there for a guy by the name of John Moan Hay, who lives in Norfolk, Virginia. He's a he's a jet fan and he had a tragic accident last month. He he dove off a, a boat and he thought oh, it was fuck. more deeper than it was, and he oh. broke his vertebrae and he's battling. He He's uh, paralyzed from the uh, chest down, but he's making his mark. And I went down to see John, all right? And his father was a 40-year Air Force serviceman that served our country. Well, I went down there on the whim because I got a nice letter from his brother. And I just felt compelled. I said, you know what? I'm going down to see this kid. And I went down, and his kid, you know, everybody's a kid when you're 64, right? He's 39 years old, but he's got three daughters. Anyway, I said, can I go down and see this kid? And he goes, he was, they were shocked. They were like, really? I said, yeah, I want to go see him. So he says, sure. I says, it's okay. He's He'll know. And I said, yeah. I said, my only thing is don't tell him I'm coming. So I go down. Well, you never know, fellas, right? You don't know. You're going down on a whim, right? You, 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 we do what we do, right? Well, this is what we do. So I go down, try to maybe do something from get his spirits, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The greatest thing I ever did, because you know why? That family and that kid, top shelf. Servicemen, Norfolk, Virginia, I never realized. Norfolk's all military. That's the military. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I went down and seen this kid, and I told him, I said, I'm not here one time. I'm going to be here for the rest of your life. I said, so we got to get you better. And so with all of a sudden, this beer comes into my lap. I'm telling you that this thing in one month, all of a sudden, this brewery, we just want, we have a podcast, NYJF podcast, right, that we do for the Jets. And that one of the guys says, listen, maybe we get a sponsorship from Bolero. So he calls the fuck, he calls a bunch of breweries. All of a sudden, this guy goes, hey, I'll do one better. I love Fire Minette. He goes, what about a beer for Fire Minette? You think he'd be interested? 
Fuck, I care. Well, I mean, of course I'm interested. <laughs> I think <laughs> beer. I'm I like it. Because I think it'll be successful. <clears throat> Fast forward, I said, it was meant for me to go see John Monet. And what they did was, not only are we going to give a bunch of this money, whatever it comes to, we're going to give to them, but they have the QR code on there that you could actually just click on like you do in a restaurant and you can give any amount. You want to give a dollar? Oh, it's like a donation? Five dollars. It goes to his GoFundMe page. Cool. And I'm trying to get this kid right. I want to see to be a miracle and make this kid walk again. So, you know, from one thing that comes for you, you can help somebody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah. Get you fast you know forward what? that. Rook, and that's just that, the way it is. Uh, in the description. Can we put that I'll QR code? I'll take care code? of it. Yeah, we're going to put, put that QR code in the description. I'm going to put the, the GoFundMe link. Right, so that way people can donate. Yeah. And they're gr- guys, when I tell you a great family, they come from they come from the Bronx, and then they move down. You know, he wound up being in the service. He went down to Norfolk, and he did his life, and he served the country for over 40 years, his father. And wow. raised three sons. They're wonderful, wonderful. Wow. How is he? Uh, how is he doing? That is he? He's, he he's doing something? good. He's he's in he's in a, a recovery mm-hmm. center now. He's in rehabilitation. They're pushing him. They're pushing him hard. It's part. It's affiliated with the military, which is really structured well. And the kid is the kid is flourishing. He's starting to roll. You know. So awesome. <laughs> Chief Daly I'm, said. Chief Fireman Daly, that beer up. overtakes Bud Light. Well, that's not going to be too difficult anyway. We're going to take that. <laughs> We're going to do that. Jimmy, quickly. Jimmy, you know I love you, bro. You know I love you, cuz. Cuz. Nice. All right, so uh, you get up to uh, 69, however way you get up there. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done this before. Slow, slow. It's a, it's a skin flute. <laughs> Get up to 69, and how is it when you go up there, bro? Do they know you're Fireman Ed when you walk in the door, like, fuck, Fireman Ed works here, or they don't really know who you are? You yeah, know. they didn't they, they didn't know who I was. You know, I got up there, and, um, you know, listen, you walk into the Hilton. I remember walking into the Hilton, bro, and I, I went in there, you know, so you have your key, and you go in the side door. So I walk in the side door, and uh, they're out. The rigs are out. And back then, we had the helmets in the – uh, with the boots and the uh, turnout coats. There was no bunker gear at that time. So you get up there, and I walk in the door, and I fucking go, oh, fuck me. I said, the, it was fucking, you know, it was it was, it was was salty. It was salty. <laughs> and, and I looked, and as I just... As soon as you I, walked in, it smelled good. It, it smelled good. It oozes good. salt, yeah, bro. I just looked, and I went, I went like this. I said, I'm, I'm in the fucking big time here, This is man. the place. I'm in the, I'm in the big time here. And uh, you know what, man? You know, the one thing you learn in this fucking life, you know, you think you're something, and you realize... Uh, nah, man. <laughs> you got a long way to go, brother. You got a long way to go. You know what? I work with great guys in Brooklyn. There's so many great firemen all over. Brooklyn's got shitload of them. And there's great firemen everywhere. Manhattan, fucking the Bronx, Queens, Staten Island. There's great firemen all over. But I'll tell you, I got humbled in a fucking hurry when I went up there. That's all I can tell you. I I I realized I was a little pimple on a fucking on guy's peak. ass. I thought it was a little pimple on their ass, bro. Rufy says that all the time. Said, you could be a pimple on a fireman's ass. <laughs> and you know what? You say, shut the fuck up and just take care of business. And, you know, and that's all you could do. You know, put your head down and do the best you can. But you know what? Uh, you know, their area, if you know 69 and 28, the area <clears> is huge. We got a fucking big area, man. You know, we're in the, we're in the little, we're in the fucking valley. If you so know logistically, we went yeah. from two twenty one. That logi- we're getting screwed now. You got logistically, you're you're the you're the hub. It's like ridiculous, and th- we were in the valley. So you know, thirty and fifty nine had to come up. Uh, eighty and twenty three had to come down. You know, eighty four and thirty four had to come down. So we just had the fucking ball of wax. We were first doing almost everything, and um, you know, uh, 
I just, you know, the more fires you go to, you know, I learned in 221 and 104, I'll never disregard anything those guys did for me and fucking they made me, you know, yeah, 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 what I course. am. But but when I went up to 69 and 28, the fucking, it just, there was so many more fires that you just have no choice. Right. And um, we All just stopped training, bro. Like, yeah, I was rolling, bro. I went in there and I was going, rolling. fuck. When I went back, when I used to go back <laughs> and go to parties, I used to, they'd ask me how it was. I would say, I, I don't want to, what are you going to, what are you going to say? Like, you mm. just fucking shut your mouth, you know, but it was rolling, man. We, we, we were rolling. Ed, what I, year did I, you I go to? Say, I went to 91. All right. So I'm going to just give you a little, I think I've said this on the podcast. I got on in 93. I was in Queens and I started to get into the job, really listening to to the job i was in astoria 117 and i used to listen to, to i used to let the scanner run guys would go up to bed at midnight and i would stay up like i was just i loved the job right i couldn't get enough of it and the thing would scan and it would stop manhattan box one three five two one two eight four one four one six eight four right uh, these boxes that would keep coming in from 1200 to 1600 right it was the same i, I remember it just from listening to it you know, 69, 1075 the box, you know, 26 truck, 1075 the box. And I used to say to myself, holy shit. Like it just even for, for myself, just listening to the radio, how much work was in. And I used to, I used to look at the map, how it's like, it's like this big, right? I mean, theoretically, I mean, you look at Astoria, I was covering this much. Harlem was covering this much. And there yes. were three jobs going on at one time. Yeah. And I've said that on. <laughs> Because of the population. Yeah, yeah, like a lot of people. You you would go, you would go down, like, I'll just give you an example, like, say, 140th Street, uh, West 140 between Adam Clayton and Frederick Douglass Boulevard, okay? So that's, that was, like, fucking fire central, okay, when I was up there. There was tenements, all right, from one end to the other. So say there was, I don't know. 10, 12, 14 tenements on one side and fucking 10, 12 tenements on the opposite side, there was thousands, yeah, how many apartments? Of, yeah. thousands of fucking people yeah, 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 on yeah, yeah. one block. One block. So mm -hmm. what would happen was when you roll OSWs, bro, that was occupied structural work. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. And, you know, you go in there, you'd be like, what the fuck? You know, and you just, like, it's just fucking, it's rolling, bro. I mean, dude, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's fucking hats and horns. Let's go. Let's go. I think, uh... I mean, what more could you want? You know, you, the little red doors would roll up, and you'd fucking smell that thing, dude. And you'd go down 8th Avenue, right? You'd go, we we won 4-3. Between seventh and eight. So you'd roll down on one, four, three, and fucking, dude, I'm telling you, we would hit the corner of one, four, three, and eight. You come fucking see. All of a sudden, I'm watching the show for, I'm fucking looking out the window. I'm like, what the fuck? And, you know, you're just like, oh, motherfucker. It's the afternoon. What the fuck? Right? And, and that just was a way oh of life. God. I mean, that just was a way of life. And, you know, I was fortunate. Um, Who was your you bosses know, there, Ed? Uh, well, when, when I got, got up there, you got when I got up there. The Chiefs, the Chiefs was F Griffin, Frank Griffin, uh, uh, Bernie Cassidy in the sixteenth, uh, Chief Kennedy, and Visconti, Nick Visconti. That was oh, the God. fucking well, Chiefs, bro. Great guy, Visconti. They went up there. I was like this. I was like this. I was fucking like, oh. <laughs> Oh shit! Right? You wouldn't say a now, peep, right? You now, wouldn't say what shit. What happens is you got now. Now you have in the house. Now he's not even the. He's not even got the spot yet. Fucking Captain Morris was the was the. Oh was my the Captain UFO of fucking sixty nine engine. My first fucking fire was with Bobby Morris the first night. I didn't even know who the fuck he was. <laughs> I knew nobody, bro. I knew nobody. Okay? And you just do what you got to do, right? Mm. But now, in that firehouse... I didn't even know was, who he was. Now, now, wait a minute. That's the Chiefs. The fucking officers is Morris. Then you got uh, Joe Flanagan. You got Rich Killian. You got uh, uh, fucking John Newell. 
Um, you got in the in the, in the in the truck. You got Eddie Finan, Patty Brown is the lieutenant, Vinny Leahy, Tommy Armstrong. I mean, these guys are fucking legendary. You're going in there. You shut the fuck <laughs> up. They're, they're, they're looking at you, bro. And, they, and there ain't no fire stories. You can forget that. Yeah, that yeah, shit's yeah, out yeah, the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop talking fire stories. You'll be out the fucking door in no time. <laughs> so you, just, you just put your head the fuck down. That's all right. It. Then you got all the you got all the fucking firemen. You're talking about, dude. You're talking about the, the guys that w- was Larry Flame was there. He was here. Tommy Grimshaw. Fucking Tommy DeLuca. Fucking Danny Beckworth. I mean, you can go on and on. And these, I missed. You got to understand something. I missed Tommy Neary. I missed, you know, Brian McPartland, Mikey McPartland, fucking Danny Finnegan. Which is even fucking, more incredible, right? I mean, think about those all the guys. guys. I mean, Jack incredible. McDonald, all Are these guys. Uh, Jimmy McGinnis. I mean, all these guys were fucking legendary firemen. Uh, and, t- and in the just, 70s and 80s, right? Like, I just missed these crazy. guys. I just missed them. But then you had all these other motherfuckers that are – you know, and I'm just trying to make my, I'm like a squirrel trying to get a nut, man. I'm just trying to, you know, I'm fucking over <laughs> there. Funny. And they're saying, you he's fireman Ed, and, you know, he did this. and he, oh, <laughs> That's oh, all you needed. <laughs> hey, this guy's got two Gordon Bennett's, but Ed puts a fireman helmet on. And he goes like this at the jet, jet game. Jet yeah, exactly. at the jet game. And you know what? Yeah, yeah, no great. matter what you did in the fucking fire floor, no matter what I would have done on the fire floor, you're always gonna be known as Fireman Ed. It wouldn't fucking matter. Yeah, and you know who yeah, told? Yeah. And you know who told me that? Captain Morris, Bobby Morris, fucking build a thousand me. bridges, right, bro? It doesn't matter. It, you ain't no. Let bridge me tell builder. you something. I worked with Bobby Morris. All right, I worked with Cap. I was. I went to the engine, and he wasn't. He was UFO. And then he went to the truck in twenty eight. Okay, he pulled the fucking coup there. That was. Unbelievable! What he fucking did there? That's all another story. But that man, the knowledge—like I can't begin to tell you between Bobby Morris and Patty Brown. All right, legendary Patty Brown. I fucking could cry to this day. I loved that man. Mm. I loved him. Well, you want to talk about a gentleman, a gentleman, gentleman, and a tough motherfucker. Like, forget it. Bobby Morris, John Farrakko. I'm sure you heard John Farrakko's name. Ladder 28. Let me tell you something. John Farrakko was, oh my mm. God. I mean, he was an army ranger. He, he'll he never, he, like, he would get pissed if I was talking about him right now. I know he get, I know he's get mad. I know, I know next time I see him at a fucking party, he's go, what the fuck are you talking about me for? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, Give like, that's shot, how kid. he Give is. Him out he, shot, was kid. <laughs> he was that guy, you know what I mean? He just took care of, he taught us so much. The, the, the things that I was taught by these guys, you know, um, just one guy after another, man, it was, you know, was I went up there. I was like, "What the fuck?" I, that was a I'm sweet like, spot there, Eddie. You know, like to get that sweet. Uh, oh, yeah, man. Time it's, frame it was, there, it was crazy, I mean? man. Vinny Vinny Leahy was in thirty three truck. You want to talk about a lieutenant? That oh my god, like you know, I used to go to fires with these guys, and I was like, "What the fuck?" I thought I was good. I sucked. <laughs> these guys like were just like beasts and i'm going i'm here just when i thought that maybe i you know knew a little something i was like no you don't you don't know fucking shit you know they would you just bury you no they would bury you it gets to the same thing it, not on it, purpose they just they did, what? they did what they did and you know what you would look like what the fuck you got a lot to learn man you know and but it was also a good thing because that would drive so me. true, and that would and say it's so me, true, man. Fuck me, I'm gonna fucking yeah. You, know, you got to pick remember, up your game. Yeah, I remember Farako saying to me, "I was at a fucking basement fire. It was fucking ridiculous." And 
anyway, whatever. It was just it was crazy. And and I fucking took a fucking beating. And all I remember him was going, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the fucking problem. Get the fuck out. Like, oh, no, right? So the job ends and he goes, listen to me, kid. He goes, listen to me. Just wear your mask. It's all it's good. He goes, it's all right. He goes, I know what you're doing. He goes, but just it takes time. Fucking, I was like, <laughs> What the fuck? I was I like, for that. You're, you're a fucking blowjob. You're a fucking blowjob. <laughs> you know? But hey, listen, that's the way it My was. But I mean, that was me. that was the Hilton and that was the guys in there. And yeah. I was I was honored and privileged to <clears throat> just be a part of it. You know, I really hey, Ed, was. they're saying on the in the chat that they tried to order your beer. said so you're sold out now. I don't know if these guys have been ordering. They're it. sold out, but they'll, they'll just put your order in and you'll fucking get it because they're they're making mass quantities. They didn't realize that it well, listen, I'm blessed and I hope Johnny gets as much as he can mo mo hay. But um they'll they're they're gonna produce right. it. We'll crazy. keep yeah. we'll keep pushing. They're, it. they're a little overwhelmed right now. I, I don't mm. think they thought it was gonna be the you they know, weren't they working with Fireman Ed. They didn't they, know. They didn't know how Fireman Ed was going to go up there. They're, Just they're wait till after the show. When you, they're not sure. Yeah, so yeah. So now we'll see what happens. It, maybe they didn't yeah, go up there. They didn't go up there and tell them, you know, I don't shine shoes no more. You yeah, maybe they don't shine shoes no more. You've been away a while. I could just try. You don't shine no fucking shoes no more. Hit that one, Gons. What are you doing, bro? I'll do it. Have that one. Salute. Salute, kid. Salute. Salute. Oh, hi, right here. Holy oh, shit, yeah. man! My face hurts. Oh yeah, man! What, I'm gonna be curious to know, but this what the sales will be tonight after this show. They're gonna probably yes. Yeah, we got about 1,600 men, guys watching men, live. The, the men take care of the men. They will. That's right, bro. Our, our, our uh, the supporters men take are care awesome. of the men. You know what? It how, how good is it, fellas, to be a part of something special? You know, my only regret in my life, my only regret, and it'll stay with me the rest of my life. With the New York City Fire Department, I wish I could do it again. Yeah, one more <laughs> fucking time. You know, one you know more what? fucking time. <laughs> I want to do it again. I want to start <laughs> over. I want the I want the days of wine. I want the days of wine and roses. That's what yeah. I want. I want the days of because <laughs> in the Hilton, in the Hilton, we we were rolling, fucking rolling, and I used to go. These are the days of yep. wine and roses. I like These it. are our days. Yeah. These are the good old days. When they talk about the good old days, those were the good old fucking days. Corrado used to say, we are living in exciting times. Yeah. I mean, when you're in probie oh, school, yeah. all the guys tell you, guys, it goes fast, right? You're, you're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got 25 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boom. It's gone, gone. right? 30 years. Gone. Unbelievable. But I'll tell you what, the Hilton, the, 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 the guys that were up there, right? You know, you know Bobby Sweeney? Yeah, you know Bobby Chief Sweeney. Yeah, Bobby was up there. He was the fucking. I mean, Chief of the Park. There were so many guys. Yeah, Bobby. Yeah, um, you know him as Bobby. I know him as Chief Sweeney. You know what I mean? That, I'm just yeah, saying. Chief, well, like yeah, that, uh, you're, well, you're, you're right. I mean, but yeah, you know, I mean, listen. You know, the office is up there. You know, there was one after the other. You know, you had Jimmy Ginty. You know, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Bobby Carberry. Oh my uh, goodness gracious! Uh, Chris. Chris Lennon, fucking, I mean, I go on and on. Eddie Finan, fucking, uh, just so many guys. Uh, Johnny Newell, Richie Killian, Joe Flanagan. Somebody's uh, asking in the chat, did you work with Mike Davidson? Mikey was my boy. Mikey Mikey was a probie. I was I was in 1969 when Bobby, uh, when uh, Mikey came in. Mikey, Mikey, I, I worked with his father, Bobby Davidson. Bobby was in was in the firehouse and then Mikey came in later on. Uh Mikey would listen, let me tell you something. Mikey was fucking everything and more, bro. You want to talk about a tough kid and a gentleman. A gentleman. A gentleman. But he was tough as nails. And uh that was a that was a fucking tragic night that night, man. I I, I wound up getting a call from Mikey Hayes. And uh, I went up to the hall. I went up to Harlem Hospital. That was, that was fucking. That was brutal, brutal. But Mikey was a great kid. Great kid, tough fireman. 
that whole crew he came in with they 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 kept the tradition of the Hilton alive. They were they were younger than us, you know, and they and they and they still do. All those kids yeah, right, yeah, right yeah. through the line, they just they get it. You know, uh, you know, I think I'm most proud of the Hilton for the way we drilled. Bobby Bobby Morris set the tone years ago and John Ferraco uh with the way we drilled and forcing doors and uh you know those guys up there to this day. They they are they have they have um they have all the all the uh, doors and weld you know weld yeah, uh, the frame. You, ch- you you change the door. You keep forcing and, doors and right? and they fucking just pop doors left and right, man. And um, you know you're, you listen. There's great companies all over. All I can speak for is the Hilton. Yeah, of course. And and, and the Hilton fucking I could just tell you they're showing up. They're getting that fucking door, bro. And they're getting it in a timely fashion. A time. Remember, you gotta execute, brother. You can be in the time, right place at the right a, time. It's a timely fashion. <laughs> fucking get the door, motherfucker. <laughs> get the door. Because nothing happens if we can't get the fucking door. Get the door. Uh, so. Hey Ed, what the uh, what makes you decide to go to the truck after you've been in the engine so long? Why'd you want to go to the truck? Well, you know, I did 11 years in the engine, so I did four in Wow, you did a long in, time in the engine, huh? Yeah, I did four in, in Brooklyn, and then I did uh, seven in, in Oh, 16. all right, yeah, yeah, seven. How'd you right. fit in the engine? And uh, <laughs> and I, I'll tell you what, listen, the heart and soul to me, bro, is the engine, man, because you ain't doing shit if you ain't putting the fire out. So yeah. I don't give a fuck. You know, I, I I used to love when the fucking the truck would be sitting there waiting, man. Fucking you damn right you waiting, motherfucker. Let's go. Mm. Fucking take fucking you you you're making that push, bro, down the hallway. Hey, nothing better than that. Hey, you are the man. Mm. You know, the fucking engine is you know, you need all the fucking boys in the engine to fucking take care of business. So it's all good. I mean, I love the engine, but you know what? Then you know you want it. You want to go to the truck, you know. But I always felt like the best truckies were good engine men. Mm. Yeah, and listen, that's not across the board because there's plenty of guys that went to the truck that are badass motherfuckers. I get it. That's just we just broke balls in the firehouse. <clears throat> you know, that was the fucking. If you came from the engine, you were like, "Fuck you!" you know? <laughs> oh, now you're a star. You're a fucking star. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know the deal. You know the deal. You know? So, but I mean, it's all listen, out of love, man. It's all out of love. Let, let, let's face it, fucking good job, ass whipping job. If fucking the fire's meeting you at the door, bro, guess what? Guess Put what? Up shut up. Let's go. That fucking engine's coming in, bro. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> fucking stand back, motherfucker. Well, what, what did uh, Chief Norman? Didn't Chief Norman say? What was his line? He John Norman. Was he was he was up there in the sixties. Yeah, yeah. He was like it was four floors up, four four rooms deep, something like that. He said, I forget what it was, or five rooms up, five floors up. Five. I don't rooms know if deep. that was him. Was that him? Was that him that said that? Somebody. I remember that saying. I thought it was the chief. I don't sounds know, like I'll, I'll have to think All right, so how long does it take you to go across the floor of the truck? You put your paper in, and how long? Well, you I'll tell you the truth. When I when I went to the truck, I went to the truck on a skin at first, mm-hmm. and um, this is how the job was back then. When I went to when I went on a skin, which was, I think was ninety eight, you know, I can't remember the fucking exact timeline, but I I know it was right around there. Um, there was 23, I had 11 fucking years on a job. There was 23 guys ahead of me in the truck. With oh my gosh. 23 guys. Now in 28 truck, there was 30 guys on a fucking riding list. Mm-hmm. You know, it was 30 guys. That's just the way it was. 32, 30 guys, 32 guys. It was fucking double groups like crazy. So I go over there and I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Oh, I'm cursing too much. Uh, no, 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 no. We just use that as the word of the day. Uh, have you heard me, bro? I've been cursing every two minutes, bro. So don't yeah, worry. No, I, I got to stop cursing. It's exciting. You know what? Five give, floors up. I, I, I don't give a fuck, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, when I went there, there was there was 23 guys ahead of me with time. Like that was insane. And you know they made they made sure they let you know about it. 
they didn't care that you had 11 years and you were the engine. <laughs> you, you know, Nobody you did your team. They didn't give a rat. That's that's a rare. That's a rarity to have that. I mean, that's you could have you could have a couple of guys over 20 years when you get to a place like even back then. But that I mean, you that's that's why that place is the place. You know, there's only yeah. a few places like that. I yeah. say all the time. You know, like. 231, 120 is, is, you know, has a lot of history. 92, 44 has a lot of history like that, right? Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, that's there's a reason why those everybody wants to go right. to those places, right? So how long yeah. did it take you to get there then, bro? Well, you know, I, I, went, I put my paper in um, probably like a year before. You didn't have to yeah. drop the fireman Ed card, did you? This one? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Cap, Cap Morris was, you know, that was funny because Cap Morris went across the floor to 28. Right. So he was the captain in 28. And uh, so, you know, I worked with him in 69 forever. And uh, so, you know, I, I, I you know, you got to wait your time, man. You know, I mean, it was guys that went, went there, they jumped in on transfer orders from other companies. You know, I made it hard on them. You know, when they came in, I told them, listen, motherfucker. Yeah, what's going on here? Said, I'm your nah, guy. Hey, listen, they did their thing, and that was good. But, you know, I had a guy, Jimmy Curley. I fucking I want him loving Jimmy. But Jimmy came him. from 29 Truck, and and I broke his balls, man. I, I said to him, listen, motherfucker. I said, you came here. He said, I said, you better do the do. I you said, hopscotch me. I'm, I'm going to be watching you. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I'm coming after you, motherfucker. If you thought and you had you eyes on you, you, got, you got a lot of eyes on you. And, and I, I wound up I wound up fucking loving Jimmy. We we became best friends. I, I love Jimmy. He's a good fireman, great guy. Just mixed He's it up. He's the guy that went to Rescue 4, is it, Ruff? No, no, no. No, 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 no. no. That's no, a no, different Not that right? curly. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, no. That's Eddie Curly. Eddie Curly. <clears throat> Jimmy, Jimmy wound up being a lieutenant in... Uh, uh, the Eagles over in Elmhurst in 136. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah, he's a great guy. Anyway, you know, and, and, and I went over there and uh, enjoyed it. You know, there was, you know, the great thing about the Hilton, man, is uh, a lot of guys came back that world, you know, firemen that came yeah, back. Came back and, as an officer. Came officers, yeah, that's good. You know? Like, we, we just, we were very fortunate with that. You know, like Patty Brown went from being a lieutenant in a uh, 28 truck to becoming a captain of 69 engine. Mm. So I worked with Patty in the engine. He was in the truck when I got there. And, and then I was in the engine when you were in the truck. And, said, and fuck it, Bobby went over and became the the, the truck That's officer. Crazy. So I, I worked with Patty and Bobby, uh, 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 Patty Morris. Brown and, and Bobby Morris for fucking years, man. Mm. I was blessed. I went through a lot of fires with them, man. A lot of fires. And, you know, like I said, you know, you're a pimple on their ass. You know, you realize it then that, wow, holy shit. And, I just saw uh, a documentary on uh, Patty Brown. I mean, you're, I've heard his name my whole life, right? And then obviously after 9 11, and then knowing a little bit about him from the show. Yeah. But well, I watched a documentary one of the pictures on him. I sent you guys. I sent you a picture. Patty, Patty Brown. Um, that one picture I sent you with all the guys. The medal day was, picture? Yeah. He, well, that was, no, he got awarded the medal from uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Giuliani for the most highly decorated uh, officer of all time at that time. He, had oh, the, shit. He, he was the most highly decorated officer. And we all went to the, we all went to city hall for that. Patty was, man, you talk about a crew there, bro. That's the crew. That's mm. my, that's my boys. That's, that's my boys. boys. That's, that's my boys. When I tell you that that is the days of wine and roses, well, I can't fucking begin to tell you. And what we did that night was fucking crazy. Who was the that boss? Was Who's the chief right there? That's, uh, let like me Crothers? see. I got to I gotta see. Like Frank Crothers. It is Crothers. You're right. That is Crothers. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Um, who else is there? I can see. I can't fucking see. I'm my. I'm blind. Everybody looks young. Yeah. Ruff, I think we might need a shirt. The days of wine and roses, bro. Yeah, man. Uh, let me tell you something. All those boys, those were all my guys. Tommy Stringer and Sesser and Billy Morris and Nigro and fucking Mimnor. They're all, they're all these guys. These are badass motherfuckers. They're all every one of them. They're all they're all fucking badass beasts. fuckers. They're beasts. They, beasts. They, 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 beasts. They, those guys right there, they were beasts. And you know what? I was proud. <laughs> I, was, I was proud to be a little, a little pimple. That's all I was proud.
I, I was proud. I, I tell you, I look at that and I get I get excited, man, because that truly was the day of wine and roses. That was Bobby Allen. You know, he wound up being the captain of 69 engine. He came back. He was a fucking fireman in 69, then went to 28 and wound up coming back. Mikey Hayes, you know, Mike, you know, Mike Hayes? No. Mikey Hayes was a fireman. He wound up being the captain of 28 truck. All these guys, they all came back. Ray Sessa was a fireman. He came back as a fucking battalion, 16th battalion. Chris Lennon came in back 16th battalion. Like, you know, that was just, that's the brothers. Let's go. Let's go. Man, we got a couple of shirts go. here. Let's go, bro. And <laughs> let's go. So we got we got to give a little something it. on that shirt, right, Ruth? We get we get ten percent. We get ten percent. You know, you know that the firemen in in you know when you go down the hallway, bro, and you see those guys that are fucking those little fire hydrants that go down and fucking put the fire out. <laughs> Guy like Mikey Laporta goes down and fucking puts that thing out, and you go John Kudlak, you go like this. What the fuck? What the fuck? Six rooms and they're fucking burning up, bro. Yeah, they're man. They're burning up. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck? You're on your, you're on your fucking stomach. <laughs> and these motherfuckers are like, no! That's when you first get. You start Dude, going. You know, you know, you just got on the job. You just, you're, you're only there a short time, and you're thinking you're something, and you're realizing you're nothing. <laughs> you, you gotta become something. You better fucking, you better. Up your ante, bro. You better you yeah. better up the ante. So it was great, man. I listen, I can't I can't talk enough about those guys. I really can't. I mean, I you was know, I want to talk about a little Ed. How did the whole thing? I mean, we know a little bit about the fireman Ed thing, but so you, you talked about it a little bit. You you, you know, you, you you grabbed that guy's helmet. When how did it progress? You know, bring us a little bit through that, like how it became yeah. to what it you know at the height of it. What, ha- what happened was my uh what how it really happened was you know, we were in the Meadowlands, right? So we went in there. You got to remember, the Jets went to the Meadowlands in 84, okay? So by 86, two years later, what was going on was the Jet chant would go <clears throat> back and forth in the end zones. In three, If you know the old Giant Stadium, it was 301, 319 was the outer um, upper deck mm-hmm. on the corners, so the jet chant used to go back and forth with a guy by the name of Don Valenz and this guy, Donnie Schaefer. They used to go back and forth. They used to do a competition, jets, chants, right? So they do a jet chant, then the other one would do it, see who was louder. I'm down in the lower tier in 133 with my brother. We're fucking hitting it. And I'm like, this fucking is horrible, bro. <laughs> this sucks. This ain't Shea Stadium. Work this. <clears throat> This is pathetic. So I go, we got to do something. So I'm 24 years old. I'm a fucking Raven lunatic. I'm running around. <laughs> you, wait, 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 I would have never picked that wait, up. Wait, I would have never picked that You, I'm I'm running, running, like, you I'm were a Raven lunatic. I'm, I'm running, 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 running are you still out. And I'm going, come on. Come on. I'm trying to get them up. <clears> so <throat> I decide I'm going to go on the railing to see if they could see me. So I go on the railing because now you're up a little higher. And I'm fucking going, come on. And all of a sudden, I go over the railing <laughs> and I lock my legs. Now, if you'll remember the old Giant Stadium, was like a 10-foot drop. It was fucking yeah. <clears throat> It was bad. <laughs> I locked my legs into the railing and I'm yelling to my brother Frankie. Frankie, Frankie's my older brother. Frankie, Frankie, help me. He goes, comes over, he grabs me by the fucking shirt, and he pulls me up, and he goes, what are you doing? <laughs> Get on my shoulders. Get on my shoulders. I got on his shoulders. <laughs> nice. And the fucking, it started, bro, it started, it just. It's like a drug went, almost, right? The place went crazy because yeah. now it was up high. And now it went from like say two thousand to ten thousand, and then Did you slowly... come up with the J E T S Jets Jets Jets. Was that no, you? No, no, no. The, the chant started with uh, actually a fireman, uh, Larry Mack, was from Engine Fifty in nineteen. Oh, no, we had him. We on. had him on the show. We had Larry yeah, Mack. La- Larry was Larry's the original. I didn't jet. know that. Yes, wow. Larry's the original Jet Jet. We act. If you go on my Instagram, Fireman at forty two, I have a little clip of we i, gotta I got all these out. guys together in sny tv 
I got them all together because all you heard was all these assholes saying, you didn't invent the check shit. You didn't start it. So I said, you know what? I'm going to get all these guys together because they were from the neighborhood. Right. I got them yeah, together. Yeah, that's right. He was from there too, right? And we did the ch- we we did a show and it's about a four minute piece. If you go on my Instagram. Yeah, I'll check it out. And you'll see it. So Larry was the originator. So when I, my brother, my brother died September 8th last year. Oh, oh Sorry, yeah, exactly. yeah, Crush me, man. Crush me. I'm fucking crush me. Anyway, uh, that was my older brother. I don't want to get emotional here. But um, there'll be no fireman ever without my brother, Frankie. There is no fireman ever without Frankie. So Frankie put me on his shoulders. And uh, as the time went on, as years went on, you, know, you got to remember the Jets sucked. And oh, uh, tell me. <laughs> and, and we just hung in there. You know that. Yeah. Coops, you know, you know, we hung in there, right? And yeah. and and you know, we started doing a chant, and, and then what happened was the guys in the upper deck, Donnie wound up getting pussy whipped, and his wife wouldn't let him go to the games, so he he stopped going. And then Donnie Schaefer in 2019 got sick, and I, me and my brother wound up. So you were the guy. You had the guy. You had the we whole thing. Up, they, they put us on a screen. And we wound up getting the place nuts. Is that and when you, you you started with the helmet right away too? Then after that, well, after I started that? with the helmet. Well, I had the helmet with Johnny, and then I made my own helmet in '89. I made my own helmet, and uh, what happened was how Fireman Ed came. The actual label Fireman Ed was, if you remember, remember the NFL countdown with Chris Berman and Tommy Jackson on yeah, Sunday yeah, night. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody would wait for for NFL countdown. Yeah, for, yeah, um, yeah. Right? Well, all of a sudden, the one night, well, the one day when I was doing a chant, all of a sudden you hear Chris Berman lead with NFL Countdown. He goes, and there is Fireman Ed leading the Jet Faithful in J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. <laughs> I go fucking the next, I swear to God, I go the next week and I go, I come walking down. The place goes crazy. They says, Fireman Ed, you're Fireman Ed. Oh, that's it, right? That's it. I, said, I, I laugh because I always tell people, I said, what do you think? I, I, I ordained myself Fireman Ed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was me. You know, well, listen, so, why let the know. truth get in the way of a good story, right? I mean. It was great, you know. So, uh, you know, it was, it was uh, you know, listen, it was, it was, it was an honor. Dude, you've been on some ride, man. That's a lot, lot of years, brother. Yeah. That's a lot you know what of I'm, freaking I'm doing years. This, I'm, I'm actually doing a fireman Ed. I'm doing it. There, there's my brother Frankie. Nice, good one, guys. Oh, man, thank you, guys. Thank you. That's there's somebody that's chugging beers. Who is look that? At my, look at my brother, my brother Frankie. That man, the top one. Gives me. Yeah, that's but him that right was there. in the Hilton. That's when we had the shirts. Models made the shirts, so <clears> we did all those shirts in '98 for the championship. And I think we raised like fifty thousand dollars, man, maybe more. And we gave that all to the. We didn't take any of that. We gave that all to the Widows and Children's Fund. Give that all to the Widows and Children's Fund, man. So it's great, you know. We're, wow. we're honored to be able to do that, honestly. And do you I still have to pay for your own shit, your own tickets, and everything? Yeah, I still, I still play. You know what? Remember, guys, if if you let them pay for your tickets, then they, they tell own you what you. to do. And I, I, I just never let that happen. I said, no, 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 that's not gonna happen. I pay for my tickets. I, I make my own way, and then I do what I want. You know, I rock the house when I rock the house. I know yeah. we had we had brought that up, and you know, I saw some little bullshit. Uh, you know, I'm not a good uh, when it comes to the keyboard warriors. You know, I, on on the internet, and unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. We, we do a pretty good job of policing that. But I did see a little scuttlebutt, and that's why yeah. I wanted to ask you uh, about. You know, yeah. guys said that you quit. You did this. You did that. All this bullshit, right? And in the pre-show, you good. brought up something that really hit me. Because that's the way I feel is that, you know, people don't know the real story. And the fact that you said, you know, you had to uphold a bigger thing, right? You you represent the fire department, right? You, you, people don't realize who you're dealing with, right? They just, they take a little snapshot with the phone. But you, you, you've you been dealing with for 30, how many years? 40 years with fucking drunk guys that want to fight with you. Right. They want to fight. They want to do this. They want to do that. They want to break the balls <clears> all <throat> the time. And, and that's what I thought was a good thing to, to bring up. And, I, and I'm glad you wanted to talk about it. Well, you know what, Lou? Honestly, I, I appreciate it. You know, Cobes, you know, Gonzo. Listen, let me tell you something. <clears throat> I, I started this thing in 86, right? Okay. So now fast forward. The, the smartphones came, if you really think about it, where they were prevalent. I'm talking about where everybody had a smartphone. Not a f- 
flip phone. Because the smartphone, now you can video. Mm -hmm. That started like, man, like seven, eight, nine, where yeah, every, right. everybody had them. <clears throat> so now, and that's the first thing they were doing is fucking <clears throat> video. Well, picture this. I'm doing it since 86. So now we're talking about, I'm there 23, 24, 25 years. Right? There's no videos. Only the cameraman has the videos, right? Mm -hmm. So you please yourself. When these video cameras come, guess what? Game on. So yeah. what happens? I've been dealing with these idiots for <laughs> since 86. Now, <laughs> I got news for you. I was one of the idiots. I was hitting it, right? But now you got these guys hitting it, double fisting, and now they can have their boy go over there and film you while they either spit on you, put mustard on you, put ketchup on you, oh, fuck boy. with you, do mm. something to you, right? Right, and to get you to, 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 to no, get you to go. they're filming you. Now, I got my family there. I, my, my son at the time was like 15. He was like 6'3". He was a beast. <laughs> he's looking. He's going, oh, I'm going to get it. I says, you're not going to You shut your mouth and sit right there. So there's a lot of things that are going on behind mm. the scenes, right? Yeah. So you got to deal with that. Now, I've been there so long. How do you step away? Like, what do you do? Right. So you get to the point where there was uh, some incidents that happened that were beyond my control. And I have a responsibility to New York City Fire Department. I have a responsibility to the children, to the quadriplegics, to a lot of people that love you and adore you. You know, you make a wrong move. You disappoint them. Mm. All right. You got a responsibility to people and it's bigger than you. It's always bigger than you, right? I mean, it's always, always. bigger than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know what I, I said, man, and here you got this guy that you want to put in, you want to put him in the toilet bowl. You, know, you want to take this head, you want to put him in the toilet bowl. You want to go, shut up, you know, but you can't. So you kind of tied. So it came to the point where I got in some good incidents that I had to step away. I had to step away. Now, it didn't mean I left the game. I was still there. I just moved out of my seats. I wound up walking around like a like a, like a homeless guy. I was walking around a stadium <laughs> like an idiot. That was the first two games. Then the following year, because there was only two games left when I stepped away. And then the following year, I went, one of my buddies had a, a, a box, and he was a lawyer. So I went up there, and I sat up there, watched the games. I was like a so aggravated, you know, and I didn't know what to do. And I wound up staying away for two years, and then uh, we figured it out. I talked to the Jets. I moved my seats closer to the bench, whereas, you know, more money. My wife agreed we paid a lot more money for the tickets, <laughs> and uh, we did. We paid for the tickets. And, um, you know, you have a little more security, and you ain't got to deal with that. Right. The meatheads. So I got some troopers. I got people that are watching me, and I can continue doing what I'm doing. But I said to them, I said, if I don't, if I don't move my seats, I said, Yeah, I'm it's not, not going to be good, man. I, and listen, so and I meet, we, yeah. we meet a ton of people, right? We go to the shows. I mean, thank God we don't. Everybody's great. We deal with guys that really aren't bombed, you know, at at a, at a, at a show, something like, or at a, right. at a game like that. So, but I can't. I could imagine just from. <clears throat> that, that's why it hit me just by what you were saying in the pre-show. That's why I wanted to bring it up because, yeah. you know, everybody has it all figured out online and they don't know shit. Nah. You know, it's it's so easy to post something when you don't know shit. You know, they never walked in your shoes. They don't know shit. And, uh, you know, to, yeah. to throw like a one line of thing on that, they don't know. You know, it, it just pisses and me off. And you know what the thing is, too? You, you know, don't owe them shit. You don't owe them Right, you don't, you don't have to you explain don't yourself to anybody shit. anyway. Exactly. Don't yeah, but nothing. you know what? Honestly, listen, here, here's, here's how I feel. If you decide you want to be a big deal and you want to rock the house and you want to get 80,000. Get involved. That, no, <laughs> but that shit comes with it. So if that. If uh, I got you. I got comes, you. No, but if the bad shit comes with it, you got to deal with it. And right. I'm good with it. 
I'm good with it because I always dealt with it. I dealt with it long before the cameras came. Mm -hmm. The difference is now they got you. See, when in the old days, bro, you would go like this to a guy. I'm in L6 over there in the parking lot. <laughs> if you're feeling froggy, jump. If you're feeling froggy, yeah. leap. Yeah. And, you know, you could deal with it then. Now this is a whole yeah. other ball game. Yeah. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. What happens is it's gotcha. I gotcha. 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 Yeah, yeah. I don't you know, be all, I all gonna be, be Feynman Ed did this. Feynman, you, you won't know nothing I about the other guy. I wasn't going to be that guy that was going, gotcha. So right. what I did was I chose to do what I did and figure it out. And I did figure it out. And, you know, I love when guys say to me, you quit. You know, I said this to, I don't know if you know the Pat McAfee show. But Pat McAfee's a very big show in ESPN. All right. It's very yeah, big. I've heard the name. Yeah, yeah. And they got a guy by the name of Boston Connor that's on there. And he calls himself Boston Connor. He's about 28 years old. So he decides to say that I came back because of Aaron Rodgers. So fortunately for me, I have my own podcast, NYJF podcast. It's on Thursday nights at 730. It's a little plug. And Nice. The shameless plug. We love it. You know mm -hmm. what? And it winds up. He's talking shit about me saying I quit. I didn't, you know, I came back for the Rogers. All right. So anyway, my guy that runs the show shows all the clips of me back all the fucking years. And he shows clips of me. He goes, that's a joke. So anyway, I says to the kid, I says, first off, I never heard of anybody call himself Boston other than that's Boston. worth anything. That's Boston Rob, who was in the Survivor series, and he fucking deserved to be called Boston Rob because he was a badass motherfucker <laughs> in Survivor. <laughs> I said, you at 28 years old, he goes, you know, I had respect for you until you left. I said, you had respect for me. I said, when I left, you were 16. What the <laughs> fuck do you know about respect? I said, are you kidding me? You were still chewing bubble gum and playing basketball. What are you talking about? So anyway, that went on. Listen, you're always going to get. That's part of life, bro. When you step up, you're going to fuck up and you got to. That's it. You got to deal with it, bro. Bring That's a great it line from the firehouse. Just, just remember one thing. I'll never, I'll never, I stand right here, bro. What you see, my heart is on my sleeve right here, bro. I tell you like it is. Now, you may not like it. Yeah, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Or you may not, li or you may not you like it. You don't me. agree with it? Yeah, don't agree. <clears throat> but you know what? I don't give a fuck because <laughs> I, I do what I do. And I'll stand by what I've done in my life. I'll stand by it. And I'll not make excuses. The one thing I'll never do, I'll never say the uh, sun was in my eyes, the rock was in the way. We, you know, we were, we were going up to fucking the roof and you got, uh, well, what happened? What happened? Don't bullshit, bro. Just say it like it is. And I'm good. Like, because the guys will always be good if you say you fucked up. If you make an excuse, yeah, yeah, I got you, oh boy. Oh yeah, boy, yeah. you you just lost all credibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Ed, yeah. another great line from the firehouse: "Empty pots make the most noise." Oh, that was my old man's line. <laughs> it's really yeah. the truth, man. You know what? Hey, guys, we could all agree, right? The firehouse made you a man, and it humbled the shit out of you. Yeah, it humbled the shit out of you because if you didn't get humbled. You probably weren't there anymore, bro. You were probably gone. You just ain't telling everybody. You're yep. full of shit. So, you know, you either succumb to the to, to the way it is or you move on. It's one or the other, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the that's the the men are the men. The men are the men. And nobody's bigger. Nobody's bigger than the firehouse. Nobody. Nobody's bigger than a firehouse. I don't give a shit. <laughs> the baddest motherfucker. Tommy Neary was the baddest motherfucker in the Hilton. And <clears throat> God rest his soul, Tommy just died. Yeah. The big red door goes up, Tommy the big Neary red door goes down. The first guy to say, this nothing. That's it, it was, man. There's nothing bigger than the firehouse. There's nothing bigger than the firehouse.
You know, the way it is, man. The way it is. Yeah. We 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 grew up and we we were blessed. We were blessed to do what we did. Blessed. Yeah. No so doubt exciting. about it. I mean, I, like you said, I'm, man. I'm, if, you, if we I'm could do it all again, that we're, I'd say I'm humbled by the fact that you guys even have me on because it's an honor. It's an honor to be on here. It's our honor. I, I I I wish I like I said to you before. That's my only regret, brother. I wish I could do it again. Yeah. One more time. Let's <laughs> yeah. go. Let's start over. Let's go. Let's, start Let's this go. Party over. I want to start over. Oh, there it is. Oh. Check it out. I'm available. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm taking it in. Uh, let me yeah, ask you a question, Ed. <laughs> if you could do it all over again, would you do anything different? Hmm. Um, would I do anything different? Um. No, nah, I don't think I would. I, I I was blessed to go to 221 and 104. I uh, I really loved I loved the firehouse. I loved the guys. Um, I learned there. I learned how to be a fireman. Um, had a lot of great times. We played ball. We just we were kicked ass. We we would have we would have geese when it come to ball. We would have geese. No nobody could fuck with us there. We were just the beasts. And then I went up to the Hilton, man, and Love you know it. what? That made, that made me a man, bro. Made me a man. Made me a man. And, I love uh, it when you said you walked in the door there and you were just like, what the heck? What did I just step into here, man? What the dude, hell did I step I, into? When I went up to that, when I went in that side door, man, I'll tell you, I, I, I talked about that when I retired. I said to the kids, I told all the kids because Mikey Hayes asked me to talk to the kids. And I said to the kids, I said, I just came to the big time. I just came to the big time. And that's not taken away from two. No, dude, not at all. No. It's just that they 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 were they were they were secluded. They couldn't fucking expand. And the Hilton just had <laughs> the area was ridiculous. So you were there, you know, you first do it, everything. Yeah. And when I went up there, man, I I, I just you know, that's the one that's the one thing I I remember that day and I said, man, I, I would like to relive that day. I would love to relive that day. That was all like looking back now, right? When you you know that now that you know how it how it went, like you could you could absorb a little bit more of uh getting in there, you know. That was like August thirteenth, I think nineteen ninety one, I get in because my oh, first shit. my first my first job was August fifteenth, uh a Saturday night. And uh, I wound up being, you know, it was funny because now, you know, it's it's the summertime, right? So now, you know, all the boys are, hey, the fucking riding list ain't exactly, uh, it's a little bad. You know, it's a little bad. It's summer, summertime. The boys got hurt. They got a little the summer off. The, the, the men got injured. The men got injured. Don't, the men got injured. The men got injured. <laughs> so, you know, I, I wound up going in there. And well, little do I know that Bobby Morris Right, he's UFO. He's the captain. This is uh, now we at that time we only have four guys. We got we got the captain, you got the chauffeur, and then you got three guys on the fucking back step. So it's me, this guy Larry Flame, who was legendary. I know that name. Was, yeah. Larry Flame was ladder 28. He was the senior man in 28 truck at the time. I don't know that. He's he's on overtime in the engine. And this guy John Markitich, who had a bunch of time, so he had the nozzle. Larry had the hookup. I had the backup. We go four o'clock in the morning. I'm pacing. I'm I'm pacing the floor because I'm fucking a nervous wreck. Right? I ain't fucking sleeping, and you can't. Go <laughs> so I'm pacing. I miss a run all, or something. <laughs> all of a sudden, we get a run up to Edgecombe Avenue, and we're riding up. Okay, we're riding up one four five, and we make the turn the wrong way, and I see all uh, I see all the skulls like this. <laughs> and I'm looking, I'm going, what the? Fuck? I'm looking, and I see top floor five. Oh man, I tell you what, they jump and they anyway. We roll, we 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 get the line, we roll. The two guys splatted on the floor as I'm walking by. I'm going, oh man, here we go. We get up, we got we got a wrap around, so we're going around, we're doing our thing, you know, we got 80. So we do our thing. 
get up there, man, it was hats and horns. That's all I could tell you. It was hats and horns. And we took care of business. We did our thing. And, you know, you get out of there and you go, what the f- <laughs> What the hell was well, just going well, on? Yeah, well, we ham and that one. I said, "Welcome to the, <laughs> to the Harlem Hilton," and you know what? I never looked back. At that point, I never looked back. It was just, and little did I know that the the captain was Bobby Morris. It was Bobby. That's Morris. the freaking best. Yeah, it was I mean, the me, best. me and Louie talk about this all the time. People don't realize that you have a job where you're actually looking forward to go to work. You're never sitting in the firehouse saying, oh, shit, man, I can't wait for this day to be over. Like, even on a Friday night, I used to love to go to the firehouse. It's only one on night Friday. better than Friday night in the firehouse. Saturday night, brother. Saturday, Saturday night in the firehouse. <laughs> so you talk, Ed, football, now your own beer, and being a New York City fireman. Dude, you, you, you covered did, all you the bases, it. bro. You covered all the bases. I, I tell you what, I, I, I'm blessed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blessed. Imagine they actually made a beer of me with that face. That's a face, <laughs> that's a face only a mother can love. Put that back. Let me see that. Me see that. I, when they showed this face, I went, first off, I look a lot younger, which I love. Thank God. Thank you God. You got the fists, they, which is all right. They, they did that. They did that right. But you know what? When you look at that, that's a face only a mother can love. <laughs> <laughs> My mother used to say that all the time. That's uh, a face who was 42 again? I forget. Who was 42? That was uh, uh, Bruce Harper. Bruce, Bruce Harper. Harper was my guy. My guy. He was, uh, he well, was drafted in 1977. Is- so, so listen, I, I've been a Ranger fan since my old man, since I was 10, since 1978. And the, the Rangers have only won one. I mean, thank God they won one cup in 1994. I had season tickets at the time, too. I remember. And now my daughters, we go to the games every year and. They were, the Rangers were in the playoffs all the time, you know, with Lundqvist. They actually went to the Cup in 2014. They, they've been re- really well. And then we had a couple of years these past few years where they, they didn't even make the playoffs. I'm like, I'm explaining to them, you, you have no idea. Like, there was years, a lot of years, like you guys. I mean, there's a lot of years. You don't even get into the freaking playoffs, right? What, what do you think, like, if they won – if they want it, like, how do you think you would, what, what would happen? Well, like, you know what, guys? I mean, it's been 54 years, right, since we won a world championship. I was one it's years been, old. I didn't really it, see it. It's been 12. <laughs> well, I wasn't, I wasn't a Jet fan when I was nine years old. I mm. just wasn't. My father was a baseball fan. So I, I don't remember the Jets winning it. I was a baseball fan. So the Jets haven't won in 54 years. All right, Lou, we haven't had a home playoff game. In 21 years. Oh, my God. Since 2002. Okay? We haven't been in the playoffs in 12 years. Mm -hmm. When I tell you that this fan base is in a desert, we've been in a desert. We've been starving. We we uh, we're 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 so thirsty. We have the foam (laughs) out of our mouths. And what happened was Aaron Rodgers decided that he came out of the darkness. And when he was in that darkness, he went, I see the Jets. I see that they're looking for the reservoir, (laughs) the water. They're looking for the water, the water. If this guy. When he was in darkness, he was going, the water, the water, the water. (laughs) And then when he came out of the darkness, he seen, this is what he's seen. Hold on a minute. One fucking minute. <laughs> One minute. One fucking minute. He went One and he sees it. He goes, Let's go. He comes out and he goes like this. He goes, I see it. I see Fire I see Fire I see Jet Nation behind him. I see Jet Nation behind him. And they're all, and you know what I have? I have foam on my mouth. <laughs> He's been 50 for all year. Harry, can you help us out? Can you help a brother out? Can you help a brother out? Would you help a fireman out? And you know what he did? He said, He helped I'm you out. Bring, I'm going to bring you the reservoir. 
Oh. I'm going to bring you the water because we're going to go to a world championship. We're going to march down the canyon. Boing! <laughs> we're going to march down the canyon of heroes. We're going to be somebody. We're going to be somebody. The jet is. And as we go down the canyon of heroes because of Aaron Rodgers, Fireman Ed will be leading the jet faithful as the floats are behind me. <laughs> and I'm going to be like this. Oh, my God. Marching like this. And periodically, I'm going to go. Jet! Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Uh, going through the canyon here. Uh, you're gonna know we're coming to city hall because we're gonna get the key to the fucking city <laughs> dude my face that was great oh i got a woody i got a woody <laughs> If that dude, don't get you riled up, baby. Dude, if that up, don't get baby. you riled up. Oh, dude, I'm riled. Bro. I'm not even a Jet fan. I'm riled up. Well, come on over, bro. Don't be afraid. Huh? We're waiting for you. We're waiting for you. Let's go. We're waiting uh, for you. We're waiting for you. We welcome anybody that wants to hop on the bandwagon. Come on. One. Come I'll on. Do I'll do it. We want the bandwagon, I'll the go with the game. Bring Me the haters. Bring all the haters. Bring the haters. Bring them. He does. He sounds like, he sounds like, uh, Hulk Hogan. Let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> oh, he's 25 inch pythons, brother. I'm bringing it, brother. I'm bringing it. Uh, well, let me tell you something. Let me brother. tell you something, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. Ed, from your lips to God's ears, bro. It's been, I'm, I'm thirsty, Ed. I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. Ed. <laughs> I'm a little parched. Uh, I'm a little listen. parched. Uh, listen, uh, we need it. We deserve it. Dude, we've this been, listen. What we've been is we've been we've been laughed at. We've been ridiculed. We've had off. We've had the foot on our neck forever. We're in a we're in a town where the Giants won five, four Super Bowls. They went to five. Okay, mm -hmm. and we watched that. Yep, that's tough. It's all. Oh, oh, I was the same bro, thing with the Islanders. Oh, it's city, our bro. time. It's what our time. Saying? We want a time. It's our time. Frankie Suffin's on board. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine what this guy would mean to this city if he brought home a fucking Lombardi trophy, bro? He would be. They're going to have a statue. They're going to have a statue of him, brother. He will be He will be the the great mystic ruler like Ralph Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> He's salting mystic ruler. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I think that that was like that. That was a good uh, old school tip of the day, right there. That, I'm that, done. I'll, I'll see you later. I'm exhausted. I'm, done, <laughs> I'm exhausted. Ed, that that's was freaking what. awesome, bro. Uh, that's I, it. You know that's what? it. I, I get myself nuts, but it's you listen. It comes from the passion. I told you guys, I wear my heart on my sleeve, um, and that's yeah, just the way it is. You know, I, uh... I I'm just blessed that you know my brother died September eighth, and I believe that Frankie. Frankie brought us Aaron Rodgers. I do. I believe that. You have to believe something. I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe that he. we're going to win a world championship. I know me and my brother, he wanted that. You know, um, there would be no Fireman Ed without him. And I believe that he's right next to me, man. He's right here. And I just, I believe that with a little, with a little help from the football gods, Nice. We're going to win ourselves a world championship. And just remember, there's a lot of Jet fans like Koobs that we have suffered, man. We, we They can't tell us that we don't deserve it because we're no, deserving no. of it. And I just Why, want to see. Because took like uh, Kenny O'Brien over Dan Marino, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so a lot of. So, I got news to you, so did, you, you. Listen, Dan Marino, the only one that couldn't take Dan Marino, if you remember, was, was Washington. <laughs> Everybody else had a shot at Dan Marino, and yeah, I know. if you remember. But, yeah. So we weren't the only ones. I know, I know, but you still. Know, uh... I've, I've said that. But you know what? With that being said, the Jet fans have suffered forever, and we deserve it. And I hope that we can – here's what I want. I want to see mm. – I, I hope and pray that the football gods will let us have home field throughout the playoffs for the first time in our history. I would love to see us raise the Lamar Hunt Trophy 
in our house. That's the AFC Championship Trophy because that means we're going to the Super Bowl. And I want all of the fans that have suffered so long to stand there in unity and we'll all cry together that yep. we finally made it. And I believe that when we go to Vegas for the world championship, <laughs> I don't give a fuck who we play. We're going to beat their fucking ass. <laughs> We're going to take over. We're going to take over Vegas. New York's coming. How, how, the New what York are the odds look like? How are the, Jets. Odds? the New York football Jets are coming. Get out the way. <laughs> Let me go. tell you something, brother. Get out the way, because we're fucking beasts. That's what I tell you, bro. That's it. That's it. Yeah, you bro. wrote down all those things he said. I can't. I can't even remember. My head's oh, spinning, bro. Fucking we're we're, we're, we, we can play it back. I think I'm, I'm gonna watch it. I gotta watch it tomorrow, right. anyway. I think it's that time though. I think it's time for the get back to fire stories because I got a little. We'll do Woody a quick over here. one. Uh, I got a bit of a Woody. tip of the day for Med. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. face hurts, man. All right, guys, you got all the sound effects now, Mister Big Cheese. Go ahead. All right, Mister Fireman, are you ready? You ready yes. for the old school tip? And by it's time yes. for it's time for the old school, school tip of tip the of day. The day. day. Oh, nice! All right, all right, big Ed, take it away, kid. Well, to all the young bucks that are out there that are in the fire service, right? Whether you're a New York City fireman or any other fireman, wherever you are, just remember. Don't let your training let you down. Just keep training. Keep keep drilling. Keep forcing doors. Keep learning your trade. Learn everything about it. Stretching lines, whatever it might be, because you know what? It'll be that day. It'll be that day, and you're going to want to be on your A game. The A game, bro. That's the bottom line. You want to be able to take care of business. Take care of business in a fire floor and then shut your mouth <laughs> and do your thing. That's it. You're a fireman. That's what you do. This is what we do. This is what we do. Nice. And shut your mouth. Shut That's your file. And part. you know what Aaron oh, Rodgers is going to do? He's going to take care of fucking business, said. That's, That's it, baby. That's it. Oh, I have a shout out quick. Uh, I'd like to thank Ed for coming on. Dude. Ed, great like, job, brother. Ever. It was a pleasure. It, it, it was, uh, uh, we've been is... waiting for this, and it was uh, lived up to the hype, man. Good I, hope, I hope I didn't curse too much. I know I nah, oh, you were great. Oh, Ed, great. no fucking way did you fucking I was cursing. Curse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> fuck <laughs> I'll, I'll fucking tell you crazy, this. But, but then I, I calmed it down a little. You did great. I the Rangers are fucking playing guys. in the background, Coop. I'll is, tell you um, what, I had a, I really Coops, the Rangers this. are playing in the background. And, uh, you guys, wow. you guys are top shelf. You represent the fire department the way it's supposed to be represented. And you know what? I'm honored. I'm honored to have been a part of it. And if I ever run into you, I'm gonna give you the other stuff, brother. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> Me, Coops. In case you forgot. Uh, hey, uh, all right, so uh, our buddy Ron Barcash from the Bell Club. I actually it's just opened it. Sent us this rookie. Oh, very is nice. It's very pretty cool, man. It's actually nice. awesome. So nice. I'd like to thank Ron for that. Oh, very nice. Great very job, nice. Ron. Um and oh shit, I just dropped shit on the floor. No, and, you, uh, you, you're giant, you, you the uh, Rangers are still playing in the background, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> you accidentally hit thing? the button. Yeah, you actually hit the button. I don't know how to stop it. Uh, it's not on my thing here. Yeah, I don't know. Is it still playing? Yeah, because it ain't me. It is. Backhead. <laughs> I don't have that one. I, I didn't That's, upload that not one. Not that yet. I mind listening to it. No, this is good. I just didn't want to take away from uh, oh. Ron Bartesh. <laughs> oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Is it done? No, it's still no. done. But anyway. Come on. I think if you just hit it again, it should stop. Yeah, just well, I'm trying it. to get there. My computer's even shut down, so I don't know how that could be. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. You know what? You got to I tell you some. what, it, at the Canyon of Heroes, if we're fortunate to win, they said the Giants would have two million. They had two million fans there. Every parade, we'll have five million. Oh my God, that would be It'll crazy. It'll be insane. That would be crazy. Bro. The agree. Jeff fans are hiding in the goddamn weeds. 
<laughs> That's they true. Nothing, they don't want to come out yet. nothing to cheer about. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I agree. Aaron Rodgers is going to have this Jeff fans all in force, bro. Dude. And I welcome every one of them. Come on, brother. Come Let's on. Go. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Come on. Come we on, want brother. You. We want you. How about my shoulders are strong. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. Uh. Guys, did you have a shout out that you wanted to do? Yeah, I did. Did you guys want to go do all your stuff first and we can finish out with that? Or do you want to start with that? What do we have? Do we have anything else? I don't know. Did you, actually, we didn't ask. Do you? Do you guys have anything? Uh, we did a commercial, right? Ed, yeah. Do you have any shout outs that you'd like to do? We're just going to. The only thing I could say is, that, listen, uh, I, I wish all the guys that are on a job uh, to be safe and uh, don't let you train and let you down. And listen, you want to you want to uh, get in touch with me, Instagram, it's Fireman Ed 42. You could also listen to me on the NYJF podcast. It's on Thursday nights at 730. I'm going to be listening now. New York Jet Football. And listen. Buy the Fireman Ed beer. Oh, yeah, I'm going to push that out, Ed. Let me tell you something. That kid needs all the help he can get. And John Moan Hay, with his GoFundMe page, and we have the QR QR code there, and I'm going to do my part. So the the Bolero... The Bolero Bolero Snort Brewery. Brewery. That's the best place to get it. That's yep. where you can get it, but you can get it online. When you go on there, they will they will deliver it, and they will. And I think a lot of spots, if you buy over fifty dollars, I think it's free delivery, and oh. they'll send it anywhere in the country. All right, cool. Say anywhere, anywhere in the country, because <clears throat> all of the uh, fan clubs are buying it. You know, they're coming from New Orleans, everywhere. It's crazy, man. They're they're all buying it, and uh, I'm proud of it, and uh, I want to see this kid. Uh, Maybe we could really Yeah, help. keep us up to date at how he's yeah. how he does. That's uh, I, I, that's good stuff. I, I am cross your fingers. Let's see if we can make him walk because I have Amen. a feeling that he's gonna he's good. gonna surprise yeah, everyone. Good stuff. So all right, guys, do your thank shout you outs a little, me, guys. A little thank a little you, Eddie. sad. We got a we got a little line of duty we have to talk about. Yes. Yeah, guns. All right. Well, it's with uh, our deepest sympathy, Captain Terry Sun Jackson. He's a captain that was on the air rescue helicopter that crashed today in Broward County. Uh one of three that did not survive, unfortunately, uh, he perished in the helicopter crash today. So Coop is going to give him the five bells as a line of duty death. Justin, brother. peace, brother. All right, so uh, Thursday night we have uh, Chief, Chief Esposito, Chief of Operations, coming on the show. Uh, it'll be a great show. He's a fine man. Me and Louie work with him in the squad. And uh, we have a whole bunch of good shows coming up. So uh, check us out. Make sure you check out Fireman's, Fireman Ed's podcast. It's uh, NY. What is it, Ed? NYJF podcast on Thursday nights. Seven check it out. I'm going to be tuning in because I am a Jets fan. And that's it, guys. We will see you uh, on Thursday night. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I really Ed, appreciate it, guys. Show. Guys, thanks, thanks again, man. All, all, all the best to you. Well, I'm a big fan of you. <laughs> oh, 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 we lost him at the end. What <laughs> happened? Oh, uh, no, stay. No, no. Oh. Let's see that in an instant replay. Oh. I'll get him. I'll get him. Oh, we'll get him back tomorrow. Uh, All right, guys. We'll see you on Thursday night. Love you guys. Oops. Missed you guys. Rookie, Ronzo, nice yeah, job, Ronzo. All right. Until thank then, you. Stay low and go. All right, everybody. We'll see you at the big one. All right, guys. Good night, and we'll see you at the top floor. <laughs> <laughs>